Hello, my name is Janine and I work as a physical therapist for Krabbit. Today I'm here to show you the jockey chair. The jockey chair was built on an idea from hippotherapy. What they saw in hippotherapy were a lot of kids coming in, sitting in wheelchairs with a lot of upper body support. But what happened when they came over on the horseback was that they weren't in that much need of that support. And they were actually able to stay more upright. So what we're trying to do with this chair is get a stable pelvis and we want the, chair, want the child to sit upright. We too often find children in a more slump position with their pelvis tilted backwards. In this chair, we are actually able to get the pelvis in a neutral position and we're able to keep the kids in that position over time. The best way for me to explain how the jockey chair works is to actually seat a child in it and then show all the adjustments that I want to make. Today we have Aisha with us. She's four years old and is diagnosed with CP. So we're going to start by putting her in the chair. So the most important thing is to make sure that you get her butt all the way back on the seat. After that, the most important thing is to make sure you secure the hip belt right away. And this needs to be tight to prevent her from sliding forwards. What I usually do after that is just giving her some upper body support, but we're gonna get back to this after, but just tightening it a little bit. Now I wanna make sure that her pelvis is all the way back on the seat. And we've actually done a good job of that. The next step is to make sure that we have the straps for the hip belt securely fastened. So we start by pulling on these back straps and now she's not able to slide forwards at all. Also check the front straps. After that we want to try and create that stable base for her. Uh, and in doing that we've got to make sure that she gets the right angles in her hip joint, knee joint and her ankle joint. So we start by checking her hip joint. We're aiming at, a, at an open hip angle. We do not want that 90 degree angle, which you get in a re regular seat. So we just try to make sure it's open. The next step is to look at the knee joint. At the knee joint, we want to aim at a 90 degree angle. In order to do that, we need to fasten some screws. You got two on each side of the footrests, here, here, and here, here. When these are opened, you're able to slide the footrest all the way up. So then I check that we get a 90 degree angle. At the ankle joint, we also want to get a 90 degree angle. You might have to open this in order to locate the screw. So, when we're happy with this position, we want to move upwards. I want to start by making sure that her harness is helping her, keeping her upright. A lot of times, it might be hard to get the child all the way back. We have the option of turning a little handle underneath here, so that we can actually tilt the whole chair a bit. That might help, but also, the most important thing is that we want her to be in an active position. So what I do is we take a tray and fasten it here like that and fasten it. A lot of the times the children can then use the table to help them extend their upper body. We also want to make sure that Aisha's headrest and side support are helping her maintain this position. The side supports are opened here and then we're able to slide them okay. inwards and upwards or downwards to make sure she gets the best support possible. We want her to have these three points of support, her hip belt and her two side supports.
her head support is opened here and you can adjust inwards, outwards and also the height. So the next step for me would be to check all the angles to see if I've done a good job positioning the child. We start by checking the angle at her hips. Now this angle you can see is a lot more open than the 90 degree angle in a regular chair. So I'm pretty happy with that. The knee joint also 90 degrees, okay. And her ankle joint is also good. So in this position, Aisha is given a stable pelvis. She's also given that open hip angle, which helps her hips to stay in a good position for the acetabulum to have the femur head inside of it. This is ex extremely good to prevent luxations. Um, her hips are actually in what we call an anatomical resting position. This is a good position because all of our muscles around this area are now resting. Biggest difference, I would say, the jockey chair in contrast to a regular chair is that you can see that her feet are now in a position underneath her. In a regular chair, her feet would be in front. Now what this does is that this really helps her to actually stay more upright. If she pushes now on her feet, this is gonna help extend her upper body. But if her feet were in front of her, the f that, that push would actually only slide her more out of position. Also, she gets a more wide support on her feet. She also gets a more wide base of support, and this is gonna help stabilize her pelvis. The seating Aisha gets in the jockey chair is good for in a lot of ways. Her shoulders are in a more good position now in order to do activities. And as I've said a lot of times, she's more upright. Hi. The upright position, let's see, is actually helping her to breathe. Even her internal organs are now more and not being squeezed together. As a checkpoint at the end, what we do is we try to picture a rectangle on her stomach. We picture this point, the lower part of her rib cage on both sides, and two points here on her iliac crests. If this rectangle is looking like a perfect rectangle, we've done a good job. That means that she is upright, in a good position, and none of her organs are being squeezed together. So, in conclusion, what we tried to do with the hypotherapy idea, we were able to transform this into everyday life situation. Aisha is able to use this chair in the kindergarten every day, and also at home. <laughs>